The King in Yellow is a novel of stories first published in 1895 by Robert W. Chambers. It contains ten stories in total, but only the first four of them deal with the King in Yellow mythos, the repairer of reputations, the mask, in the court of the dragon, and the yellow sign. All four stories weave the theme of a cursed play, The King in Yellow, which is never presented in its entirety, but is understood to bring madness and despair to any who glimpse its text, especially the second act. The Repairer of Reputations is probably the most comprehensive story as far as how the play affects its readers. It follows Hildred Castagne, who reads the play while recovering from a head injury sustained in a fall from a horse. In the story, he seeks to become a ruler and servant of the King in Yellow. In The Mask, a gifted sculptor discovers a liquid solution that will turn any living thing into stone. His beautiful fiancée succumbs to this fate, following a strange fever sustained after a friend discovers and reads the play in their home. A church in Paris is the setting for In the Court of the Dragon, in which the protagonist attends mass after reading The King in Yellow. After leaving, he is stalked by a nefarious church organist with an inhumanly pale face, only to find he hasn't left, but fell asleep during service. However, while he slept, his soul was being hunted by the very organist he dreamed of, so as to be delivered to the Yellow King. The Yellow Sign is the last of four stories, and another excellent representation of what happens to those who read the novel or are visited by an emissary of the King. An artist, Jack, is gifted a strange piece of jewelry by his favorite model-turned-lover, Tessie. It is a black onyx clasp, inlaid with a gold design, not of any human script. The two later find that the strange symbol is the yellow sign, which acts as a sort of beacon for the Yellow King, as his emissary, an apparent reanimated corpse, comes for the couple by the end of the story. By that point, though, they have discovered that the play has inexplicably appeared on the shelves of Jack's bookcase. After reading it, they are rendered nearly motionless, as if in a trance, only able to sit together and speak in low voices of the king and the pallid mask. Before their demise, all readers of the play are overcome by visions of the fantastical land Carcosa, a place of unknown location but strange, unsettling beauty, a land of twin suns, black stars, shattered moons, and the serene Lake Hali, from which fog rises upon the shore. It is supposed that Carcosa is where the Yellow King dwells, and it is also possible that Carcosa is a sort of destroyed kingdom, as suggested by the tone of Casilda's song, a poem at the very beginning of The Repairer of Reputations, which is a supposed excerpt from Act Two of the play. There is also a hint that Carcosa is a destroyed kingdom, at the beginning of The Mask, in which we see another quote from the actual play, in which Casilda and Camilla, two characters in the play, ask the stranger to remove his mask, for they have all laid aside their masks. The stranger informs them that he wears no mask, resulting in a terrified reaction from Camilla. This stranger is also referred to as the Man in the Pallid Mask, and it is believed that he is either an emissary of the Yellow King or the Yellow King himself. It is possible the stranger's arrival is what caused the fall of Lost Carcosa. A bit of trivia about these stories. The stories have inspired many writers, causing a connection to be made with the Yellow King and Hastor, as if these are one and the same entity. However, this connection was never made by Chambers himself. Contrary to popular belief, H.P. Lovecraft had nothing to do with the creation of these stories, and he also didn't add to the mythos, but was indeed influenced by it. He mentions Hastor and Carcosa in some of his works, but the author who made changes was August Derleth. Derleth was responsible also for publishing some of Lovecraft's works after he'd passed on, so this is possibly why Lovecraft is erroneously associated with the modifications. The Yellow King seems specifically drawn to those with an artistic inclination, or perhaps they are the ones drawn to him. Those who see the yellow sign fall under a sort of mind control, similar to those who read the play but it is unknown to what end this purpose serves. Is the king forming a cult? Does he intend destruction of the world as we know it? That unknown aspect is part of what makes this series so eerie. The King in Yellow is not a real play, and its plot is unknown. While this frustrates many readers, this is also what makes the mythos so enigmatic. What is it, within its pages, that contains such horrible truths as to turn its readers mad? 
We can only imagine, and very often, the darkness of our own imaginations and the unknown we cannot see are the most powerfully frightening. Some say that hearing about the Yellow King is enough to draw him to you. Some say that being told the stories of the Yellow King will make you susceptible to his gaze, just as I have told you the stories. <laughs>